Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Sharpsburg, otherwise known as the Battle of Antietam, that occurred in Washington County, Maryland on September 17, 1862. Content warning. This video contains graphic images of the results of the Battle of Antietam, or otherwise known as Sharpsburg. This is including imagery of the dead bodies after the battle. Viewer discretion is advised. As a reminder, there is a reason many battles have two different names in the American Civil War. This was due to the fact that the Union based the name of the battle on some sort of geological identifying area such as a close body of water or some sort of natural feature, whereas the Confederates would name the battle after the closest town or man-made landmark. This is one of the reasons why there is so much confusion about the names of battles during the American Civil War. In addition, the Battle of Antietam was very large and has a lot of recorded detail. This brief overview cannot adequately cover the battle, and I strongly urge if you have an interest to follow up with other sources. After a string of wins, Confederate Commander Robert E. Lee pushed his way into Maryland. His desire was to have a decisive battle to decide the fate of the Confederate States and to push the fighting back into Maryland and out of the Confederate States themselves. This resulted in the Battle of Antietam. It was during this push that one of the copies of Lee's plan fell into Union hands and allowed McClellan to react. McClellan was able to use these plans to dislodge Lee from the South Mountain. McClellan was also able to cause Lee to stop his attack into Maryland. This caused Lee to fight sooner with less troops than he'd wanted, but the site of the battle would be at a place called Sharpsburg. The Union would call this place Antietam Creek, and with all this, Lee felt confident in his troops and the defensive position he had taken for this battle, even though he's outnumbered almost two to one, with his troops numbering under 40,000 men and the Union forces were more than 75,000. Lee position forced McClellan to aim for the northern route of attack at Sharpsburg, to go through the more open area allowing his troops to concentrate more effectively and avoid the difficult terrain. The start of the battle saw that the three bridges that crossed Antietam Creek itself were controlled. Two of them were under the Union control while the Confederates held the third one. This allowed McClellan to form his troops up on the eastern side and prepare for his attack. To aid his push, McClellan moved up heavy artillery and grouped them on the other side of the bridge. He did that so he could rely on the creek itself to defend him if Lee were to counterattack. The Union started to fight on September 17th. The Union forces moved down to Hagerstown Turnpike and was commanded by Union Major General Joseph Hooker and his 1st Corps. Their aim was Dunker Church, a small whitewashed building belonging to the local German Baptists. Hooker's men numbered about 8,600 while the defenders were led by our very own Confederate Major General Thomas Stonewall Jackson. Him and his 7,700 men defended the church. When the Union troops entered the cornfield, an artillery duel between the Union and Confederate artillery batteries ensued. The artillery fire followed the troops and sprawled through both sets of woods and David Miller's farm that was in between them. Neither side was willing to be pushed back, so they both funneled men continuously into the meat grinder. The cost of just the first five hours at battle was more than 13,000 men killed and wounded. Communication was poor later in the morning as Union troops inadvertently attacked the center of the Confederate forces at a place called Sunken Road. This name would change after this battle to Bloody Lane. As a result of Edwin Summers' division's constant attacks forced down this lane, but were repulsed each time by Confederate defenders. Unfortunately for the Confederates, there was a misunderstanding in orders that commanded them to abandon Bloody Lane, even though they were situated in an excellent position. This resulted in a hole in Lee's line, a weak point that could have been taken advantage of by the Union. Unfortunately, Union General McClellan did not take advantage of this, and he refused to push the attack again. This allowed the Confederates to eventually recover and strengthen that point. The final portion of the battle occurred under Union General Burnside, who had earlier begun a diversionary attack on Lee's right flank. The crossing of the Antietam Creek Bridge did not go successfully at first, and only gained a bridge after hours of fighting. It is now known as Burnside's Bridge after that fight. Eventually, Burnside moved his men fully across the creek and began to move on Sharpsburg. The Confederates had fewer troops to defend as Lee had been using those troops as reinforcements on his left flank. As all seemed lost for the Confederate Army, Confederate General A.P. Hill arrived from his attack on Harper's Ferry in time to drive into General Burnside's flank, smashing the Union forces back and ending the fighting as dark overtook them. The morning of September 18th showed Union Commander McClellan refusing to attack Lee's forces again. This resulted in an unexpected and resounding victory for the Confederates as McClellan pulled his men back. The final casualties were brutal. The Confederate losses were high with approximately 1,570 killed, 
7,750 wounded, and 1,020 captured or missing for a total loss approximately of 10,340 men. Meanwhile, Union losses were higher, with 2,110 killed, 9,550 wounded, and 750 captured for a total approximate loss of 12,410 men. Please join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.